ever wondered of viewing a PWM led demo using a proper 5 timer IC chip? No, you don't. In this video tutorial, we're gonna be talking about how to build a circuit, how to put up the circuit together, how the circuit works, and everything you need to know when you want to make this project. Do all the state in the ending of this video to get great insight. I'm Six Prime's my name, and let's dive in. Now the main components I'm going to be using in this video is actually the NE55 timer IC. Now the NE55 timer IC is actually a PWM oscillating generator. You can use it to create different frequencies. I made a couple of videos in my last video talking about the 55 timer IC chip. Normally I have not made a full breakdown video talking about this IC but I'm going to make that in the future. But in this video tutorial the main components I'm going to be using in this video is actually the NE55 timer. Actually a uh, uh, timer which is actually used to create different numerous PWM signals. You can use it to make a battle, you can use it to make oscillating frequency, you can use it in place of a transistor. Normally you can use two transistors or a transistor to make as a switch or to create oscillating frequency but also you can use a 5 timer IC chip to do that job. So stay tuned and let's dive into the circuit connections and how it works. Subscribe. Now this is the 5 timer IC chip. Actually the NE55 timer IC chip which I'm going to be, going to be using in this video. This uh, model, this IC is about uh, some dollars in the alias press you can go get them and uh, this is the main chip in this video which i'm going to be using to create the pwm signal which is going to be used to either increase the brightness of the led or decrease the brightness of the led let's go into the circuit okay welcome back now this is the circuit diagram of the pwm signal yeah this uh, uh this uh, circuit is actually capable of producing 48 kilo haze and we'll be asking why am i making why am i producing this kind of high frequency for my pwm signal but actually the reason why i am uh, producing that kind of high frequency is to be sure that even though i'm reducing the brightness of the led to avoid flickering and the led you know when the frequency is very low when the frequency is low when you're reducing the brightness of the led when it's reducing the duty cycle compresses the the flickering starts the bulb starts flickering so to avoid that i increased the i made a circuit that will increase the frequency very very high so now these are the components and this is the schematic on how to connect it you can screenshot it if you want to get the full detail knowledge also i post all these details of a particular video on my patreon check out my patreon the link in the description to get full details and uh, info okay now first here here is the capacitor this is the capacitor it's actually a 130 pf capacitor this is the capacitor i'm going to name the components real quick uh, this is the capacitor and this is the potentiometer this is a potentiometer which is connected here and there's a 10 kilo ohms resistor right here and this stands for 5 volt and ground and this is the output and uh, yeah so I'm going to explain real quick how the circuit works how it discharge how it charges also I made some kind of a uh, uh, little explanation on this uh, PWM signal you can go check it out but also I'm going to make another explanation for new viewers who are coming into this video to get full great insight Okay, now in a real quick, I'm gonna be saying how you're gonna be connecting this circuit. Now, the first pin, pin one, is actually connected to ground. This is how you need to count the 5 timer. You start from the left up, up side. You start from the left up side. One, two, three, four. Then you start from the right bottom. Five, six, seven, eight. That's the way to count uh, the pin out of uh, four, five timer, and that is the way to to memorize that stuff so that you can be able to connect it in correct co connect it in correct way, and uh, don't uh, misplace the connections and get your uh, four, five timer burnt. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now the first pin is actually connected to ground. The second pin is actually connected to pin two. Pin two is actually connected to pin six. Yeah, normally. Now the third pin is actually pin three. Pin three is actually the output of the five, five timer. Yeah, the output. Yeah, this is the output which is producing the frequency. Now pin four actually here is connected to VCC. Yeah, pin four normally is connected to VCC, and pin five is connected to this one three zero PF capacitor, then to ground. Then looking at pin 6, pin 6 is connected to the washer pin of the potentiometer. Yeah, the center pin, actually the washer pin of the poten potentiometer. And uh, pin 7 is actually connected to one leg of the R1 resistor. I forgot to write this. This is actually R1 and this is R2. Yeah, this is resistor, this is resistor 1 and this is resistor 2. So pin 7 is connected to one leg of resistor 2. Then uh, pin 8 is actually VCC and I'm also connected to the other leg of R1 which is 10 kilo ohms resistor. And uh, the other leg of the potentiometer is connected to the uh, 10 k resistor pin 7 and the other leg is connected to VCC. Now, yeah, here is how it works. 
the first thing you need to mind this circuit is power supply you can use a range of uh, 5 volt to 12 volt power this ic i think uh, that is my on my own experiment and checking i guess uh, 5 volt 12 volt is a good one to um power the ic first of all and now you're going to be asking how did this circuit actually works now firstly i'm going to start with this pf capacitor now this 103 pf capacitor which is connected to ground is a uh, is, av is available for the smoothing of the circuit yeah to smooth all this uh, electric uh, circuit or smooth the supply voltage for you to have a clean supply voltage that is the usefulness of this capacitor then also the arrow one right here which is the 10 kilo ohms resistor this 10 kilo ohms resistor is actually a pull up resistor in the circuit yeah it actually helps to helps to discharge and clear away all static electricity as in the circuit now the pin 2 the sorry the r one resistor is actually the most important resistor which does all the job without this resistor the capacitor cannot be able to charge up so this resistor is responsible for charging up the capacitor and discharging the capacitor oh my god i didn't even draw the capacitor holy a sec okay welcome back so very sorry about that short break i didn't draw the second capacitor which actually discharge and charges from this ro 2 resistor don't mind about this cancellation right here i did a wrong connection actually the one leg of the capacitor of the second capacitor which discharges and charges is actually connected to pin six yeah and the other leg is actually connected to pin seven so this capacitor is the capacitor which discharges and uh, charges uh, when the uh, proper five timer output is either high or low and it charges through this resistor right here the ro2 resistor so depending on the way you turn the potentiometer it uh, reacts to the duty cycle and either small the duty cycle or increase the duty cycle in other words it makes the it increases the on time or decreases the on time that is how it controls the lead brightness either low or high so this is the full breakdown of the circuit how it works and also other important information which i just explained earlier if you have any questions that you don't understand or i didn't explain let me know in the comment section below and i will face it really quick let's quickly go into the connection process i know you're waiting for it let's dive in subscribe to make the LED dimmer PWM signal generator, this is all the project I test I need. Okay, without wasting much time, let's start the connection. As I said earlier, we're going to be using this component, a breadboard for connection, and also a lot of jump wires for multiple connections. Let's quickly make the connections real quick. This was the final result of the project using a Papa 5 timer IC chip. It works pretty fine and fantastic. When turning in anti clockwise direction, it increases the brightness of the LED, and when turning in a clockwise direction, it decreases the brightness of the LED. It may work in reverse for you, but do all to make this project at your home if you like. Do all to subscribe and let's go to the conclusion. Okay, thank you very much for watching the video to the ending. I really appreciate you. If you really like this video, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to this channel, and also support me on Patreon for interesting videos like this. Thank you very much, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.